Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're gonna bang up some 12th Amendment for you guys and fix some of the boo-boos that the Founding Fathers made in the original Constitution. What are you talking about, Mr. Hughes? They were perfect. Maybe not perfect, perfect. All right, here we go, guys. We're not gonna read this constitutional amendment like we do some of the others. It's pretty wordy. We're just gonna kind of right down the lane and explain it to you. This is meant to fix the problems of the Electoral College. Yeah, guys, there's problems with Article 2, Section 1, Clause 3. Um, the Electoral College, the process for electing the president. And uh, these problems arise both in 1796 and in 1800. So why don't we take a look at those two elections and then we'll kind of briefly explain what the 12th Amendment's gonna do to fix those problems and then we're gonna go have a fantastic day of learning and growing as young people and lifelong learners on the internet. All right, so let's start with 1796. The way that the constitutional process works um, before the 12th Amendment is basically that each elector votes for two people. The two people he thinks Bestest would be the bestest president. Um, today, we know that they vote for president and vice president. But basically, the way the system works back then is after they would count all the electoral votes, the guy that had first place would be the president, and the guy in second place would be vice president. So basically, there's a, some kind of electoral scheming going on between the electors to make sure that the guy in second place is of the same party to be the vice president for the president. So in 1796, you have John Adams, the Federalist, who is uh, now running to replace the retiring George Washington, and he chooses uh, Tom Pinckney to be his vice president, another Federalist. They like blood brothers. And then you have Thomas Jefferson and his vice president, I think it's Aaron Burr. They're the Democratic Republicans. So what was supposed to occur was only like, a, like one guy, I think, one elector, is supposed to throw his vote away. So every other Federalist votes, you know, um, John Adams, Thomas Pinckney. And then uh, one of them is supposed to vote their vote away, like give it to Jefferson or something. So the guy in second place would be a Federalist, Thomas Pickney. And the problem is they don't communicate very well, and a number of them do that. So what occurs? You get Thomas Jefferson in second place. So for four years, um, and it's the only time in American history that this has really happened, you have two opposing parties that don't want to work together that are the president and the vice president of the United States. And I think that this uh, is freaking people out. Maybe not be, you know, back then because Thomas Jefferson's a cool cat, but in the future, if you have this recurring situation where the vice president has a, you know, a benefit if the president drops dead, namely he'll become president, you know, you have like a house of cards situation. You have like a Kevin Spacey scheming thing going on there. So that's the first problem. Uh, the president and the vice president aren't running on the same ticket. So let's look at 1800. All right, 1800 is the problem of the tie, because if everybody does their duty, if everybody votes the way that they're supposed to vote, then you'd end up with a tie, because whoever the president would be, the, 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 the vice president, their second choice, would have the same number of votes. So somebody's got to throw their vote away, otherwise it doesn't work. So in 1800, you have Thomas Jefferson um, and Aaron Burr running against John Adams, and this time it's you know heavily favored to be the Democratic Republicans. Somebody's got to throw their vote away. Somebody's not going to vote for Aaron Burr, right? Wrong. They all vote Jefferson Burr. So you end up in a tie and it gets thrown into the House of Reps. The problem that gets further compounded because it's not the new Congress that elects the president and then it would be no problem because the Democratic Republicans had a banner year in 1800. It's the old Federalist Congress. And those sons of you-know-whats, they don't want to give Jefferson the presidency. So they go through, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 36 rounds trying to choose the president. Um, at the end of the day, it's Alexander Hamilton, who's the hero of the situation, who convinces his federal federalists that it's uh, best that they make sure that Jefferson gets the presidency. Let bygones be bygones. Um, he knows that Aaron Burr is a more dangerous choice um, than Thomas Jefferson. But now we have to fix these problems, all right? We're going to fix them because I got something called the 12th Amendment. So the 12th Amendment, at the end of the day, it's really long, guys. At the end of the day, it's going to have two distinct ballots for the presidency and the vice presidency. So when the electors are casting their votes, they don't have to worry about ties or who comes in second, all this nonsense. It'll be the ticket that wins, and we don't have to worry about all this nonsense. 
Um, you do still have this favorite son clause, though. And what this clause is, it's also in the original Constitution, that um, if you're an elector from Texas, you're not allowed to choose a president and vice president that are both from Texas. This was supposed to stop um, like the favorite son syndrome, that every state would just elect people from their state. The only time this has ever been of any concern was in 2000. Um, there were, I believe, some suits that came up in the court system after Bush and Cheney won, because technically uh, Cheney was living in Texas for five or six years before the election. Um, so technically, according to the 12th Amendment, the people in Texas, the electors from Texas, should not have been able to vote for Bush and Cheney. But the courts ruled that he changed his uh, license the last couple weeks before the election. But that's in that amendment. So having the president and the vice president also is going to stop that problem of ties um, or anything occurring like that happened in 1800. Um, and now, basically what occurs is like the Electoral College, after we have the election, it goes to a joint session of Congress where the vice president acting as president of the Senate is the official counter of the Electoral College. Um, and then if nobody gets the majority of votes, this is still the same, it gets thrown into the House of Reps for the presidency. Um, rather than having five from the list, which is in the original Constitution, um, the 12th Amendment says that there will be three from the list. Um, this becomes important in 1824. In 1824, I don't want to go on a tangent on YouTube, but it's a pretty cool story. In 1824, you have four big Democratic Republicans running. You have Andrew Jackson, you have John Quincy Adams, you have William Crawford, and you have Henry Clay. And these four guys, nobody gets the Electoral College win. So the top three, which are going to be Jackson, Adams, um, and Crawford, they go to the House of Reps. Crawford's really sick, so he doesn't count anymore. So the Congress, the House of Reps, has to choose between um, John Quincy Adams, who kind of lost the election, the popular vote, and this new kid on the block, Andrew Jackson. Well, it happens to be that Henry Clay, who's the fourth guy who's not in the Situation Room anymore, he supposedly strikes what's called the corrupt bargain with John Quincy Adams. Um, Henry Clay was the Speaker of the House. He had enormous influence in the House of Reps, and he gathers his forces, and in 1824, they all line up behind John Quincy Adams, and John Quincy Adams steals the election from Andrew Jackson. Um, and then when uh, John Quincy Adams has to choose a Secretary of State, I wonder who's he going to choose? Henry Clay, what are you doing? Corrupt bargain, like House of Cards, like Kevin Spacey. Um, but at the end of the day, um, that's basically it, guys. That's the 12th Amendment for you. No more president and vice presidents of opposing parties. We're going to have one ticket, and we're going to elect those bad boys together. Giddy up for the learning, guys. If you haven't checked out Hip Hughes History, why don't you click on that teacher's face? I think that's one of the teachers out there that shows my videos sometimes. So click his face, and you'll zip off to Hip Hughes History, where you'll find like 300 videos, and you subscribe for free fun focused video lectures. All right, where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time when we do teaching.